Hey, I'm Paulie Litt. This is Robert Renierson. We're here with Bill Campbell today. Let's talk, Jonesboro. <laughs> That's professional. <laughs> That's a pro right here. Yeah, Gentlemen, yeah. It's, well, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you guys. Yes, we're doing Let's Talk Jonesboro. We've got a professional actor. We've got a professional scientist. And we've got, <laughs> uh, we've got two guys who come to Jonesboro to make uh, high-quality textiles. And they're wearing them. I'm wearing them. You'll wear them better than I do. But I want you to see this shirt that they made for us here at the city. It's got the city crest on it, or the city logo. And we're so proud. What they're doing is in the industrial park. And you have a business that started. Go ahead and first tell us about your business and how long you've been here. So uh, HPR, Harvest Produce Retail. Uh, We've been here, October will be uh, three years, three years. Uh, and, and it's, well, you just were over with the mayor, uh, what was it, last two weeks ago? Yeah. But you had the ability, you saw it when, when we started. first, there was nothing, nothing in there. In there. Right, uh, right. So uh, you'd speak on it better, but because we kind of see it every day. But for us, just going from this empty warehouse uh, to now, we, we take all the all the cotton. It's locally grown within 50 miles of here. We yeah. spin it and we turn it into uh, yarn for textiles, for t-shirts, and clothing. Yeah, and the, the context that I have is seeing them these guys when they came to town, and I'm all about entrepreneurship. That's what the, the, the future is for Jonesboro, really. And, and so these guys came from New Jersey and Florida and uh, have this tremendous background for young 20 something guys. You guys aren't even, you're not even, 30 is like mm -hmm. so far off, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's creeping. It's, it's creeping. <laughs> He's halfway there. Yeah, He's the yeah, old guy. Yeah. He's the, you're the old one. What, you're 25 or something? 26. Oh. Yeah, 26. God, man, don't let the years slip away. I know. Robert? I'm um, 23. See, man. The world's your oyster. Yeah. So. <laughs> this guy, it's already going by. Yeah, yeah it's going no, by. It, I started when I was six, you know, so I'm, you were, you I'm were getting working old. at I'm, the age of six. Yeah, I'm getting ready to retire. <laughs> I got my walker out. Now, let's get this out of the way. We've Everybody has seen you on shows. What did you start out doing? How did you get into the acting? You know, I started when I was six, and uh, I started mainly with commercials. Uh, so I did... Uh, She's about 30, 40 commercials, and then I went into film, and I was on a show for years, Hope and Faith, and uh, then I did Speed Racer, Dowd, Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind, Jersey Girl, just a, a bunch of bunch of stuff well, all I, over the place. I noticed that Re I read Reed just Philbin called you a 40-year-old in a five-year-old body. What does yeah. that mean? You drank coffee? Yeah, and I had coffee. We had a golf. You know, it was funny. We. Uh, I, Grew up on a show, Hope and Faith, and, and Kelly Ripa and Faith Ford. Kelly's was my uh, my aunt on the show. And um, Regis and I just uh, made a connection. When he first, he would guest star, and, and when he came on, I grew up, I was a huge Sinatra fan and a huge Rat Pack fan. Uh, Sammy Davis, Dean Martin, Peter Lawford, all those boys. Dean was and, underrated, I think. Oh, Dean was great. Although, for me, I think Sammy Davis was probably the most overall talented. Is he could right? dance, he could sing, and he could make you laugh. Yes. You that's, know? That's perfect. Um, but when I, I, I turned to my mom and I said, Mom, this guy knew those guys. You know, he was he was Joey Bishop's right-hand man on the Joey Bishop oh, show right? for years. I didn't um, know and, I mean, Regis is, was a legend. Um, and he was so incredibly wonderful and so nice and patient with me and we we got to a point where I used to tour and sing with him on his little really? uh, circuit yeah so we had a we had a real <laughs> special connection well that's great well yeah uh, Google Polly and now fast forward 20 years he's sitting in a coffee shop with some guy having a conversation about textiles like we do yeah everybody does that at some point uh, Robert you did it right that's yep. what you were you were meanwhile in Florida a few years younger talking couple years younger talking about textiles oh oh yeah oh yeah all all i do is talk about textiles <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now we do now we do now we do, <laughs> now we do. you know it was funny we, i was in the city um in new york and i was talking to a, a friend of mine and he just told me how difficult it was to deal with overseas and um the big two-year-old in me said why uh and he said cause 
and that wasn't really a good enough answer for me. Uh, so I went down uh, to the bookstore the next day and I got every book I could on textiles and uh, cotton and after diving into the research and finding out that a bale of cotton travels twice around the world before it gets turned into a t-shirt and sold to us in America, wow. I said that, that really doesn't make sense. You know, we, we grow it here, why can't we spin it here and, and make it here? And uh, that's when I got my thinking cap on and said, I, I got to get somebody smart. <laughs> I got to get somebody who can do the numbers and look at blueprints and all these mathematical things because uh, I, I know less than nothing, you know. So uh, I was driving one day in Florida and I said, boom, I got it, Robert. <laughs> Our mothers are, are good friends, and you were up uh, at uh, WPI. I was at WPI. That's the college I went to. But I was down for spring break. Uh, me and my girlfriend were going to um, Disney. So I just drive over to his house. I quickly drive over. I said, I called him up. I said, hey, you home? He goes, yeah. I said, all right, I'll be there in five minutes. So I drive over, not knowing what, what was going on. And I, I said, listen, I got a great idea, all right? We're going to open up a textile factory. And uh, Robert's, uh, you know, we call him the man of few but important words, you know. <laughs> and he just looks at me and goes, yeah, okay, I think I get out, and walks out. Now, fast forward, Disney, right? fast forward, fast uh, forward, two I, years ago, I hear him telling the story because I'm thinking, he, we're golden. Right. You know, I, he's, he's I, walked out, I walked out of that house and I was like, this guy is a nut job. <laughs> I got to get away from here because I'm in a, a murder scene right now. I got to run, you know. And uh, but truth be told, um, before that, um, I was in WPI, and while I was there, explain WPI. Worcester Polytechnic you. Institute. It's uh, the college I went to. It's an hour west of Boston. It, it, okay, Mass, so, Massachusetts. Well, yes, yeah. sir. That's and, that's spelled a lot longer than Worcester. Than, yes, than, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Yes. And you have your degree in physics. Yes, yeah, I have a degree in physics. But at the time, I um, I kind of front loaded all my physics classes, so I ran out of stuff to do, kind of in, in college. And I was like, this is really coming to an end. I need to kind of find something that I that I that I'm passionate about. And I was kind of researching textiles at the time, just just by happening. And I and I found that it was very difficult the barrier of entry to get into that world was very high and it was just it was disturbing to me because we live in a in a day where technology makes almost everything very easy right. you know but this was still back in the you know in the stone ages you know you just it was it was impossible so when me and Polly met that day even though I thought he was a nut job it was we really were connecting on something that we both had been thinking about for a while, and it was fate. That's you know? crazy. That's yeah. crazy. That's brilliant, but it's 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 unbelievable. The <laughs> so then, guys, yeah. So then I tell him, all right, we're going to Memphis. All right. All right. Because because through the studies, we f we found that a bale of cotton, every bale of cotton at one point had to go to Memphis. I think everything goes through Memphis on yeah. a truck and or a barge. Well, you yeah. know, especially I, I don't. I'm sure you've been, you know, the cotton. Yes. Uh, exchange. King cotton. Cotton Exchange is right there on Front Street, and uh, we really wanted to cement going back to the, the original s spot, you know. Um, but unfortunately, the places that we were looking at wasn't, weren't really what we needed. And we found Jonesboro on a Google perimeter search. That's how we is that found, right? That's how mm -hmm. we found Jonesboro. And I, I drove up one day, and I called Robert, I said, you got a cub here. I think we found it. And the rest is history, as they say. Wow. Yeah. And then wow. we went to, uh, then we went to building the machines. Oh yeah. Step by step, one by one. Well, you found a building. You didn't build a building. You found a building in the industrial park in we Jonesboro, did. right? You we see? did well. In fact, to tell you the truth, Bill, we found everything we needed here in Jonesboro. Huh. Um, you know, and I want to commend you and the mayor and uh, everybody here. Uh, Jonesboro has been wonderful to us. Um, I really can't express, you know, from people like Alexander's Machine Shop. He's rebuilt half, half, half of our machines for us. Really? You know, then we have Intact, which is Tom Chester, our electrician in town. He's local. He's a genius uh, when it comes to rewiring and, and 
rewriting the schematics for us. Uh, I mean, some of these machine people ask me all the time, they're like, where did you find this guy? I said, he's here, you know? You have L&M Motors. Uh, I mean, there's just so many wonderful places, quality farms. As, as we, we're there, I'm there every day. You know, it's right over by me in the industrial park. So I don't quite know if we could have done it anywhere else but Jonesboro. That's incredible. That's incredible. And that's a story that I think Jonesboro should be proud of. But yeah. uh, you, you're... Uh, you guys' ability to put this together, I'm sure, has taken a lot of hours. Uh, <laughs> took a little bit of time. You know, it took a <laughs> Just bit of time. a little bit of time, you know. So I first met you a couple of years ago, and you had this mostly empty facility and, yeah. a, and a dream that you explained very well. So there was no doubting that I thought you guys were good. I mean, I, you, you know smart young people when you see them, and you know people who are driven when you see them. So... I yeah, but you had something. to walk away. Some most, we, we even walked away most days thinking, what the heck are we doing? <laughs> I mean, we had no idea. We had never seen any of the machines run until we saw our own machines well, run. Well, maybe I didn't know that detail. <laughs> yeah, nobody knew about that. We don't tell many people that, you know. Uh, but, but, yeah, no. Well, it's, uh, and so we go back, uh, Mayor Copenhaver, uh, Brian Richardson, I think Tony Thomas, and we walk in there, and I'm looking at this place, and now I'm, my, my brain is clicking with am amazement at what you guys have accomplished in two years. Uh, tell us about a little bit how far you are and what you, what you have going now and, and then what, what you want for the future. Well, we, we have the yarn facility here. So what we do is we take, uh, I know a lot of people here are familiar with the bale that comes out of the gin. So that's what we get. We get. Um, all our cotton from the local gins here, around here. And that comes to us, and our machines continually, kind of continue the process of cleaning it and start twisting it and stretching it into yarn. I saw that, and, and you, you start with a just regular cotton, and it goes through this long process, and yeah. it comes out as a very thin, very strong. I would never use it as a garate. I just want you to understand that. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah. it's it's a very strong, very thin fiber. For uh, well, our goal always at, uh, from from the forefront was was to make the best quality yarn, um, and, and that's why we started with the yarn because we we understand that that dictates what type of fabric you make, uh, the quality of the fabric, and the quality of uh, subsequently you know, whatever you make with that fabric in the cut and sew process. So that's why we started there. Um, and now the ultimate goal is to um, build a fabric facility and a cut and sew facility here. Um, you're wearing a shirt, I'm wearing our, sh our shirt. So right now we have a cooperative with Minnesota Knitting Mills and, and they knit for us and they cut and sew for us. And that's why we have the ability to make these 100% all-natural, undyed, locally grown cotton tees. And we're in the process right now of uh, getting a hoodie uh, together uh, for the collection, along with pants. So, uh, you know, the, the New Jersey in me had to, we had to have a tracksuit. Yeah, we, gotta, <laughs> we had to have, have a tracksuit. I think Big Polly, Little Polly, whoever he was from the Sopranos had a tracksuit. So, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you job, got to. Right, yeah. You, you got to. You can't it's it. like those native shirts here. You yeah. know, when you're born in New Jersey, you're born with you're a tracksuit. <laughs> you know, it's like when you're born here, you got to have a native right. native shirt. Right, that's beautiful. You know, that's um, beautiful. But you, you, uh, what people can't see, you, you, you might be able to see the t-shirts are a little bit better quality than probably what we are used to wearing, but you can't see how it feels. And I was impressed that you guys talked about when you gave us these shirts, you said, beat them up, tear them up. We want to know. Yeah. And you are learning that it's kind of tough to do, right? Well, you know, when you take time in the, the spinning process and you take time in the creation of it, because that's what it is. It, it, it is at its basis an art form of creation. Um, and we felt that that had been lost or, or is being, maybe being lost right. as, right. as a, you know, we have so many wonderfully talented, creative individuals in this country that have been forgotten about. 
That's right. Um, and when you build something with quality, it lasts, and we want it to last. You know, our goal always is we want this T-shirt to be able to be given to your son. You know, if you're wow. a young dad, you know, right. we want that to be because those were things that used to be held on to, right. you know, and, and sought after. And now we, we kind of live in a, a, a world that people throw away T-shirts, you know, or wear sure. them a couple times. Sure, that's right. So I always say when we give them, like, a, like you said, just see, give, us, give us, be the case study. Try to beat them up, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. Robert, tell me about the, the process that you've seen as an entrepreneur. I mean, you, you were trying, all you wanted to do was go to Disney World. <laughs> and, and, and here you are. So, but you, but you you have experienced a lot and taken in a whole lot. Probably you you guys have have a shared experience, but you probably got your own individual yeah. experience. Yeah. Well, it was definitely different than anything else I'd ever done in my entire life. That's for sure. And it's you know it's not something that you can just kind of um, think of a good solution and it's theoretical. You got to put it to the test and you got to actually do the work. You know, so there's no there's no equation that you can kind of just write down and say, you know, the day's done. Now you got to actually build the machines. You got to, and you know, and a big thing with this is you know the quality. You got to get the quality right. You got to make sure every single machine works correctly. There's gears. There's, you know, there's um, everything you could ever think of, and everything, every single part of those machines is integral to how the yarn comes out. You know, we have to get the gears exactly right. The twist gear, the draft gear, everything needs to be perfect to get that right strength and that right thinness so that we can create the best shirts. And really, that is, that's all we want to do is just have these shirts that are, that are just amazing, you know? That's really it. That's it, that's it. Well, I'm going to ask you a couple of things. What advice do you have to young entrepreneurs who have a dream? Uh, what, what, from your experience, what advice do you have for others? Do it. It's very simple. It's a very simple two words. It's the hardest two words, you know, mm -hmm. um, because certainly uh, we understand. Uh, we went into a uh, an unknown territory which is textiles that are very big, very old, and very different in the sense of where we came from. And we didn't let anybody tell us differently how we were going to do it. And, and sometimes you just have to do that. When you have the ability and a, and a dream and, and the right intentions, you just got to keep pushing forward. And you got to jump into it. I mean, no matter how much we particularly read about these machines, about the whole process, Never. doesn't make a difference mm -hmm. to actually doing it. There's no YouTube channel that nope. shows you all. <laughs> nope. No, no. And even that, you know, to a certain extent, that doesn't even. You just have to be a little hands-on. And I always say don't be afraid to ask questions. There's no dumb questions. That's good. There's somebody that's been there before you, mm -hmm. long before you, that has had the same thing happen to them right. nine times, out of ten, especially with machines. You know, there's only so many variables, so many things that can go wrong. So, and, and, and we've had the, the good fortune of having the ability, whether it be the Truslers or the Marzolis or uh, whatever machine it may be, to call upon all of our technicians and, and their technicians, and they've been wonderful. That's They've been wonderful when we ask the questions. They answer them to their best of, the best of their abilities. What I love is you guys are outsiders. We, we in Jonesboro work to try to get better, and sometimes we don't see our successes. This is proof that Jonesboro is, is a destination for young entrepreneurs, certain things. But I do want to ask this. What can Jonesboro do for you guys? That, you, that What do you need now? What do other entrepreneurs need that we can provide better? You know, I, I tell you, from a standpoint of building, there, there, there wasn't anything that, that could have been done differently. You, you, everybody had their hand out ready to help and, 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 and ready to make us 
create uh, the infrastructure we needed at, at any given time. I mean, now we're at a point where we'd love to see everybody in Jonesboro wear their own T-shirts. We would love that too. You know, I, I, I think it was, uh, I think it'd be really cool if they had the ability to have their own T-shirts that were grown locally right here and especially because everybody a lot of people here are farmers yeah so right. the ability for them to see what their product can make um pretty neat pretty neat yeah hey thank you guys so much for being a part of it for making jonesboro cooler and and uh for creating a business man that we we want to be proud of we are proud of and as you know, as the mayor has told you, the city will be happy to help in any way you can and, and any leadership roles you can provide. Is there a way for people to buy your shirts or do they need to go through the marketing? No. Company? Well, our, we have a brand. It's called Back to One. Okay. And that's our, uh, our in-house brand. So it's back to and then one dot com. Back and, to the, the, and the two is the digit? The number yep, two. the number What about two. the one? It's spelled out? Spelled yes, out, sir. yes. All right. Back Two, two one, one. Mm -hmm. yeah all right awesome awesome yeah. well Jim. thank you so much and and thank you jonesboro yeah we, we appreciate it man robert renierson paulie litt we're so proud to have you guys thank you very much for hey being thank, on thank you thank you thank you all Bill. right gentlemen